Okay, it looks like we're live. Okay, yep. hello YouTube. This is Troy, and welcome back to the channel of the Lonely Wolf. So, welcome back to my special guest. So, this is some random geek. So, it's so good to have him back. Hi. Again. Hello. Um. So today, this is um. So we're going to have some gossip talk. Um. So we're going to compare the um the turkey. So we're going to have some turkey talk. So we'll talk about turkeys. Um. Then another fucking bird that's irritating me at the moment. So I'll um. So we'll introduce Dallas, my cockatiel. So we'll get to know him a little bit better. And then um, there's a bit of gossip. So, you know, bearing Michael Rollins, I'd sort of mm -hmm. I'd love to weigh in on that. <laughs> I know about that too. So, yeah, I can weigh in on that too. Yeah. So, um, can you tell me? Um, so, okay. So, how was your Thanksgiving? So, you had a good Thanksgiving? Oh, uh, it was for me, it's kind of weird that, like, for my intermediate family, we kind of have our Thanksgiving dinner last Friday. Uh, because my oldest brother also has his birthday on the 20th, and I think, oh, okay. I think, I think my stepmom was like doing something yesterday or decided I'm not gonna cook, and so it's like, come over on Friday night to the house. And she and she also invited co workers, and that was kind of cool. So, we kind of had the Thanksgiving dinner, uh, on Friday and stuff like that. And also we didn't have turkey because I'm actually mildly allergic to turkey and stuff like that. Uh, so the only turkey, I did have some turkey yesterday. I had wild turkey in fact. And wild turkey. Bourbon. I, yeah. um, I kind of, I'm very partial to um, Southern comfort. I haven't had that yet, but if uh, yeah, I might like it. Mix that with like, you know what the best thing you can mix it with? Um, it's like cherry flavored cola, like said so cherry Coke or cherry flavored Pepsi or whatever. And it's not really, and Australia is one of those countries. It's not really a thing here, like cherry flavored anything. Like it's like, we just don't have, like our palate is not designed for cherry flavored anything. Cause most people like think it tastes like cough syrup or something like that. But then I'm one of those few people who's actually like kind of, um, I'm kind of hooked on. I always love the cherry flavored cola, like rather than the vanilla, like, cause we've got a vanilla one, like, and everyone drinks that and it's like, no, I want the cherry. But then. When I find that, I've got to go to like the little Asian grocery store to go and get like the cherry coke, and then, and then after that, um, like sometimes I'll mix. If I'm feeling a bit cheeky, I'll mix in like the Southern Comfort, and it's like the it's just this elixir of gold. It's absolutely smooth, mm. and then uh, maybe the White Russian. Um, I don't really drink alcohol that much these days, but I usually have a White Russian, so it coats the tummy if you're going to have a big piss up. And then, um, what else do they have? Um, what else do I enjoy? Yeah, margaritas are okay. Oh yeah, yeah, I do like margaritas. I, for me, I don't like beers. I, I just don't. I don't like bitter. I don't like coffee either, or something like that. And so, and people have said, like Christy Witter said, oh, have you tried a porter or something? I had had tried a porter and it's a darker beer, and it's like, okay, I like that better than like a IPA or Pal L. I hate those. Those are really bitter for me. Uh, but a, a, but the porters was like okay. I can drink that, but it's kind of just like it's it tastes better. The but they I still have a hard time saying it tastes good. It's still a beer to me and stuff like that. I much prefer ciders. Those are sweet and those are good. But I, I will tell you a I beer that I like I like ginger beers. Those are good because they're gingery. Yep, gingery, yeah. That's yeah, I kind of don't mind that. I had ginger and raspberry once. It was really because they got all these different things over there um yeah i don't know i don't really get it because we don't thanksgiving's not obviously not a thing here um in the like other it's only like an american thing but it's like even because it's such a different tradition here in australia because I, I couldn't really stomach that having to do that twice in a year because like number one turkey is just the most dried up crusty old bird that you know it's like people just don't i don't know they don't seem to um I don't know, like some people can cook it right. You'd have to be really, really good to be able to cook it like just perfect. Mm -hmm, yeah. But then, I don't know, and then it's the same for Christmas as well. But I don't know, it'd be really painful for some people, especially if you got like a kind of psychodrama in the family because like, because if it's winter, you're obviously like stuck in a house with like all these people um, and you're kind of stuck around the table. Whereas, you know, because, you know, obviously because we're in the Southern Hemisphere, like and Queensland as well, it's like very, very hot and humid on that day. So, Mm -hmm. like a lot of people a lot of people just go to the beach on that day and or they might have like an outdoor kind of thing um yeah sometimes just like we set up a gazebo thing like in the outside so the kids can go like swimming and all that because i've got like mm -hmm. nieces and nephews and all that um in my family like obviously i don't have any kids which is good but you know i've got i've got nieces and nephews and they like they'll they can like run around the yard and they can 
you know, go swimming or whatever, which is kind of cool. And then the rest of us, like, um, and we don't really eat like a hot turkey or anything like that. Like usually what, well, like you might cook it the night before and then you refrigerate it and then we eat it all cold. So you eat that. People love salad. cold turkeys or like that. It's one of those things yeah. where like some people prefer it cold. Some of that. It has to be cooked, of course, but yeah. they prefer it cold. Kind of like cold pizza. Yeah. I always heat up my pizza. I like my pizza country, but some people love cold pizza. I mean, right out there, refrigerated cold pizza, which is something I never like, do. Yeah. And then, yeah, because that's what we do. Like, we pretty much eat, like, our, um, because, well, that's, that's what my family does anyway. Like, they'll eat the thing. Hang on, off my keyboard, you. Um, <laughs> but pretty much, <laughs> he'll, um, I don't know. He gets really naughty about that. Like, not, no, you're not allowed on my keyboard. Fuck off. Me. Uh, yeah, our cockatiel was, uh, I grew up, uh, uh, no, no, I didn't grow up. I grew up with dogs, uh, but, um, and eventually we had a cocktail as well as dogs and so it was kind of like that so uh, yeah when uh for my mom's birthday when i was 18 she was not 18 at the time of course uh, but she uh, she was received the gift of a cockatiel uh from our dad and stuff like that and like i told you off air and like that my dad picked this one cocktail because it was a group of in the group of cocktails that came forward to him in the cage while another group walked away and he thought oh this must be the friendly cocktail so he picked one of them uh we called her ginger and then she and when she we brought ginger that my dad brought ginger home to our mom for her birthday gift and stuff like that it was fine at first and stuff like that but we quickly kind of noticed that like ginger didn't like our mom and so we theorized that oh maybe the ginger was handled by a male handler and so it has a fondness for males or something like that and yeah so get a so have a closer look everyone so youtube this is so i chose a gender neutral name because it could be like male female or or non-binary mm -hmm. wouldn't that be wouldn't that be funny if it was a non a non-binary bird no it's like um or, in, or intersexual that's possible too maybe <laughs> asexual yeah it's like I don't know. I think this one is a boy though, because he seems like um, I think this one was trained by a male hand. And as I was saying before, like I've kind of like um, I kind of look Mediterranean or ethnic. And then the guy who was like an Indian guy or Middle Eastern guy, or whatever, was the um the handler of the bird at the beginning. And so um, he was sort of like I think he's, I think he's nice to everyone. Like he goes to my dad, my mum, and everyone else. But yeah, so we're getting he's pretty. As you can see, he's quite um, like he's very very friendly and. Like he's sort of cuddly, it's like, mm -hmm. yeah. Our cocktail ginger, if we let her to be on like our summer nights, I'm like, oh, hi, how are there? And for some reason, she would go into our mouth. It's like, what are you trying to reach up in there? What are you trying to like? Are you trying to pick our teeth for us or something like that? I, mean, I guess you're friendly, but don't put your head in my mouth. And so that was kind of weird, but yeah, yeah. He, kind of picks, yeah he, he picks off of my whiskers on my face. Like, I don't know, I could just have my own shaver. It's like, I don't even have to go to a Barbara, he's like, grooming you he likes you yeah he is kind of like yeah i sort of like him it's like he's so easy so friendly i like i couldn't have asked for a better like sort of a more team of bird. but what i'm looking for is like hopefully if this one becomes a male which i think it is like i'm hoping obviously the cheek like it's duller but so if it's a male i'm looking right. like a, um a brighter plumage like it's yes. a bright orange type thing and, and then, also, mo if I remember correctly, the, most of the entire head will be like one color, same as like the crest and stuff like that. So, if, like most of his head was like, of, yeah, this variation, like, there's not really much else right. changed except for his peach things. But then underneath his tail mm -hmm. is like, um, because the tail at the moment's all spotted, so it's got the female plumage. So they're all pretty much like androgynous as they start mm -hmm. off. But now they, right. um, like once they get their plumage and everything like that, it's like you can you probably tell but then it's also the personality wise as well because the females are a little bit um i think they're a little bit i'd argue they're a little bit more timid whereas this one here seems a lot more kind of adventurous and sort of mischievous and bold and everything like that which is what and they'll often and they're more prone to talking and they'll be likely to talk so i can train it to like fuck off or what it like to say yeah sorts of words like that yeah so as i was saying before it's yeah it's really weird because they're like the way we celebrate Christmas is like the outdoor thing. And then we have everything like cold. So like the, cause it's like, nobody wants to be in the kitchen, like on a like really hot day like that and have like all that. Sort or of be in the kitchen for six hours doing that either. Yeah. 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 Having to heat all that stuff. So usually it's like done the night before and then refrigerated. And then it's usually like salad and everything like that. And the thing is since you're outside, so like the, the, the relatives, all the cunty relatives, you can kind of like get away from them. 
<laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> there's some that there's some people in my family, like, we don't really have anything to do with it anymore, but I remember, like, you know, a few years ago, there's, like, a couple of cousins and they're, like, in-laws and all that, and they were the most sour cunts that I've ever met. Like, <laughs> they couldn't even, like, smile. Like, they couldn't even bring themselves to smile at the table. They were just so sour. And I was thinking, yeah, fuck you. And then, like, I just ended up, like, going out with, um, I just, like, I just sort of go outside and, like, I do my own thing. So maybe someone else, like my brother or someone like that, will just, like, go outside and, like, do her own thing and just, like, drink or whatever. Uh, I, yeah, for me, we never I, – because uh, from my uh, – parents families always was in the midwest and uh, i live in and we they my parents moved to pacific northwest uh as we we have almost never had thanksgiving at like other relatives um uh, houses and stuff like that except for like my uh stepmom's adopted mom and something like that that's the only time we actually travel out of state to like do thanksgiving and those thanksgivings were fine so, like that. so i i fortunately never had the experience of being around the county uh, in-laws or county uh, other relatives and stuff like that. Distant relatives, that's the word I was looking for. Or So whenever we would like see each other, oh, hi, it's someone's wedding and stuff like that. Oh, this is a, when was the last time I met you? Oh, yeah, someone else's funeral. Basically, that was kind of it. But some of them are cool. But uh, thankfully, I, I don't have uh, any uh, county relatives and stuff like yeah. that. Have you heard that joke about? Have you heard that joke about? You know, there's annoying people at the like when you go to the family weddings, you got those annoying elderly relatives that are poking you, saying, you know, you're next, you're next, and then you go with it, and you know what I mean. And then, um, so you do the same things in the funerals. Have you looked for anyone interesting? How have you been? How's your love life and stuff like that? Kind of mm -hmm. like that caricature. Yeah, and then it's like um, you can get him back at the funeral, saying, you know, um, so yep, you're going to be next, you're next on the line. So um, you know. <laughs> oh, thankfully I did not do that at my grandma's funeral and something like that. It was <laughs> I didn't think of doing that though, and I I don't remember anyone doing that. It was kind of like a yeah. somber one, but it's like it was a funny yeah, funeral. Yeah, and you don't do like don't and if it's an open casket, like it's it's against etiquette. Like it's it's very it's rather rude to do the face swap application with the corpse. Oh god! <laughs> you're, giving, you're giving this generation's ideas. Oh god! I'm gonna see the memes now. And then they do their 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 filters like on their dead grandmother, like the flower filters or whatever. And they can know who's lucky. It's the internet. I'm sure, it, uh, the internet. I'm sure it has happened before. I'm now dreading humanity. <laughs> it's still <laughs> funny to me, but I'm like, oh god, no, not to the dead. Don't disrespect the dead like that. No, like you don't do internet. You don't do the thought filters or like, yeah, the, I don't know. The, I think it's what they call them, just their puppy dog ears or whatever. Like, if you do that, I just think it's a thought thing. Even like, even boys or girls, it's not, I'm not being sexist or nothing like that, but it's boys and girls. But yeah, yeah you don't do like filters on like a dead body that's lying in the casket or whatever. And you don't do the face swap. That's really, that's, that's horrible. That's really creepy. <laughs> I can't. Okay, I can accept it in someone's obituary, but still, it's kind of oh, do it on someone's graduation photo, or something like that. That's that's yes. fair game. But, you, can but the person the, the bride and the, you can do it on the bride and groom if you want to be cheeky. But oh yeah, at a funeral, you're kind of pushing the boundaries of taste just a little bit. Yeah, I mean, the, even though the word <laughs> funeral starts with the word fun, still be respectful. <laughs> How the fuck did we get to this point? I, I mean, this is what conversations are like with my family. We start from point A, go to point D, go to point Z, all the way to point 22, and we're back to point 11, then back to like point D and stuff like that. So, why, you yeah, I this, is why, this is why I've always had to, this is why I keep inviting you back because it's like we it always, um, because yeah, that's that's how the conversation flows and it just becomes really funny. <laughs> um, so let's have a bit of a gossip. Um, because I mean, mostly, okay, I don't normally talk about these type of things. Like, mostly I'll just, like, stick to whatever the issues are in my own thing. But it was, like, it was kind of interesting. Um, I guess the, the concept of echo chambers, like, I feel like it's one of those words that is on the internet. And it's, like, every motherfucker's using that word. And it's not, like, it's not particularly one side. It's, like, it's just a general term. And I, I was having a think last night. And when I made, like, I made another video about the, um, what is it called, the Kilroy, like, yeah, that's a, I only know it as the Kilroy event because that's a website like kilroyevent.com or .org or and, something like that. And like, and I was having a think of it. And then, like, they go and then there's like a, an atheist conference that like um, Steve and Christian, like the janitor, go to. 
you know um and that's that's kind of their thing so it's kind of so i imagine it's probably one of those events that's probably like more in line with their style of atheism like the more progressive and intersectional mm -hmm. type of stuff. so that's i mean that's good yeah. and i think and, I, and that's what i was thinking like when i was doing my live show last night i was thinking you know is it such a like this echo chamber thing whatever they want to call it like is it really that much of a bad thing like because i was just like i was looking at both of them i just think you know what at the end of the day like um so like christy and steven all that like you know it's like it's such a positive thing and i never thought about that but then i thought you know like what a wonderful thing is to to meet the people that you like share the common interest with and mm -hmm. like, um and to see them in person like to be there in person with them and to like hug each other and like that it's like like what a wonderful like, experience it is and like so much fun and like yeah i'd be totally like i don't mind like which side and like i'll do a like fundraiser thing for the cocktail like the margarita fund <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> on, the, on the opinions of echo chambers it's like one thing is that like what human beings i think just kind of naturally do is we naturally kind of be tribalistic we naturally be like oh you like anime i love anime and then we both yeah. start talking to something like that or and so if you more i think more and more people are just more like to hang out with people that uh, agree with their yeah. political alignment and something like that so yeah. we kind of naturally I form our own echo chambers yeah and like i don't i think it's just like our human nature so there's nothing inherently wrong so when you think about the because they were they were criticizing the atheist conference the one that like christy and that are going to because it's like um because they said oh there's like what do they say like no conservative voices or something like that or whatever and it's like well i don't know it's just like it's just a natural tendency that you'll stick to like the people that you that you have a common interest with and you know you'll have a good time with those people and it's just like that's just the way it is and like um so yeah. yeah like like a yeah, go fund like i'll be happy to like um donate like for like margarita fund or whatever for the um mm -hmm. so that they can to make it fun for them whatever and then at the same time like with the other at the other side like the anti sjw type things i um, think it's personal personally in my opinion i think it's the anti sjw's that throw around the echo chamber enough or they accuse the feminists okay. of living in the echo chamber and that a lot of that comes from like how uh the, how the feminists kind of like just like will, will be willing to like block people and stuff like that like the hashtag blocked by steve shives that's because he personally doesn't want to interact with these people and stuff like that or he before he started blocking people he yeah. was just yeah. receiving i mean a flood thousands and thousands of thousands of comments of Mm. asking for the same argument and so like what about this what about this and steve would from what i heard from what he said he engaged and said his position and said his thoughts and so like that but they'll be like oh what about this what about this oh but what about this and so steve was just tired of it and so that's why he decided to use block bots to do a blockchain on people who are followers of x persons so like that especially the ones that were like doing a lot of harassment to him and yeah. his wife when his he had his wife on for like one uh episode like of this like one tiny, one video tiny little set like it's a it's a footage of clip i mean everyone completely yeah. lost their shit over that and it was just like, i agree yeah like with what is it three years down the track and they were still being yeah. like the, these these stupid videos about and that's the, i mean yeah. i i personally don't really um i wouldn't really watch steve shive's channel like i personally like obviously i would like you know, he can say whatever he loves. I don't really care. I don't really interact or in a negative way or positive way. I'm just sort of not really drawn to yeah. that. There's obviously there's a lot of reasons I don't really necessarily agree with him, but I think the I don't think that justifies the level of the kind of vitriolic yeah. kind of level, especially um what was I gonna say? Um yeah something really wrong about that it's it's very it's almost very dishonorable and like um it's mm -hmm. not manly like when they if they want to talk about the alpha yeah. male like it's not it's not an alpha male thing to like kind of like you go after someone's person, wife or something like that but yeah like going like family like like family should be off limits that's the yeah. that's the main thing and even in those crime families like you see those shows where they got the crime family and like you know you go after someone's or you start talking about people's families you know you can end up like six feet under yeah and it's like, and this is like organized crime family and that's kind of like the i don't know i i have a certain i'm old-fashioned but i have that belief about you know honor between thieves or whatever there's a certain kind of yeah. honor code and that kind of violates a certain code or taboo when you're starting to like bring in families um like even though she oh, was, yeah. um like she agreed to be on there but she's not the main person on the channel though like it's his no. channel yeah like you know take it up with him
<laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but but that's where the accusation for echo chamber usually comes from. Is that like you people won't debate us and stuff like that? No. If you talk to certain people, they'll be willing to debate you. Destiny seems to be willing to debate people, even debate random people from his audience on his streams and stuff like that. Kevin Logan has always been willing to like talk to people. He's talked to Sargon several times. He talked to Andy Worski. He talked to like the Honey Badgers. He talked to Karen yeah. Strong and stuff like that. Some of these people are willing to discuss and stuff like that, but others are not. But that's up to each individual person. And and the yeah. and that's where I think it's, a, it's kind of silly for the accusation of echo chamber. And for this uh, Kilroy event, I had a problem of like these guys, these like uh, YouTubers and stuff like that started, wanted to like do their own event and stuff like that. Sure, have at it. I'll maybe make a comment about it. It's like, oh, look, oh, look, all these people that I don't have much in common with politically and I don't want to like sit down and yeah. talk with and stuff it's, like that. I mean, I don't think there's any, I don't think it's a cause for kind of discourse so much. I mean, and that's the thing, and that's why I was kind of skeptical about the idea of having like people from the um from the social justice side like because i'm more of a middle of the ground kind of guy but the people mm -hmm. on the, the social justice side like the um like tim blake michael rollins like it, i'm kind of skeptical skeptical of the idea because for me like it's not really it's not something that i'm really taking seriously at this state like i don't really take it seriously because it just seems like like that's what i said last night in my kind of um i just spoke live to the camera and i just said look it just seems like a um i don't know just a popcorn guilty pleasure type event rather than a sort of a, a dialogue or something of intellectual value and most of them they're going to be pissed off their heads anyway like the i mean that's what they do i mean the on that particular side of the fence anyway like that's they that they do that they drink a lot of booze yes i mean i I wonder if any one of them says angry something or something like that. There's like this ranting monkey, but he's just like a uh, a one another one of those time a dozen anime avatar antis and stuff like that. But yeah, these guys are just like really angry for some reason or another, and they just point their vitriol to or their anger to like feminism and stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, hey, th this is going to be a great vent for their fans, and that's cool and awesome and stuff like that. Uh, but uh, any of the SGW types or something like that, Michael, Christie, or something like that, if they, if they, I, I, it'd be up to them if they want to go. I think, and also like Michael Rowan's kind of like elaborate, because okay, let's go into the gossip between Michael Rowan's and Barry and stuff like that, because first, Michael Rollins kind of like, I think he made a video, if I'm correct, uh, but commenting on the Kilroy at the lineup and stuff like that. And then I think based off that video, Barry made a video comment, kind of daring Michael to go and go to debate Sargon. These people always smell like, you know, oh, you complaining about this Kilroy event? No, they're not complaining, they're commenting. That's a key distinction and stuff like that. But, but yet some of the fans of Barry or Sargon are like, oh, you're you're complaining that they have this Kilroy event? So why don't you go and stuff like that? Well, Michael said he doesn't want to. And then I guess Barry uh, made a video where he said, hi, Michael. If you want to uh, go, come to uh, go to the Kilroy event, I'll set up a campaign and and I will set up, have to go fund you so that you can go to the event so you can debate Sargon and something like that. I'm paraphrasing. I've not seen any Baron video, so I could be absolutely wrong on this and quote me on that. And I'm sure Baron will dislike my impression of him, and that's fine. Um, so I think based off of that, and Mike Rollins made another follow-up video to that, saying, hey, "You guys are willing to pay." for me to go to Kiroi to basically have a vacation in America to like for this event to like debate Sargon or something like that. You know what? If your guys are going to pay for my hotel, for my flights, for my uh, travel, for uh, my uh, food and even some like play money and something like that, if you guys are going to put up the money to do that, sure, I'll go. I would love to go. I would love to have a holiday yeah, vacation. Holiday. That's it. Seems pretty self defeating because it's a free holiday, and like for yeah. what? I mean, like, like, why do you want to spend money to watch a, a debate like between, you know, um, it's just going to be the same. I don't know. It's the same kind of debate, and it's kind of like, it's one of those debates I'm kind of like bored of, like, yeah. especially with the larger, the larger kind of skeptic channels, and mm -hmm. that's why I'm kind of like, because I kind of find my own niche on, um, YouTube where I look for these smaller channels. And they've got a more profound kind of, um, you know, when it comes to skepticism or atheism, like even though I'm kind of am religious myself in, in some, in 
to only a certain extent though like i'll still sort of yeah. believe the idea of god but it's it's a bit more complicated than that um so i wouldn't call myself an atheist for that reason but um yeah the thing that i had um trouble with is you know i feel like that that topic is just so um you know the culture war things it's kind of something that yeah. a lot of people are bored of and people are kind of are migrating to like people who are coming on youtube are kind of migrating to the fringes and that's where i kind of find like the um like a lot of the mates that i hang out with like even though we're called like a cancer podcast it's not exactly oh it does get cancerous like a sense of humor is cancerous but it's mm. like we kind of do that. and then so it's kind of that's that's the echo chamber that i'm in anyway but it's not really an echo chamber because even though we we know each other really well and like we're we're of the same kind of um, philosophy, we'll still like debate topics between ourselves. So it could be that um, you know, even though we're friends with each other, like we'll still um, debate just as an academic exercise to iron out like things that we might disagree with with some things. We come mm -hmm. from a very diverse because some of them are very conservative, like some very liberal. That's thing. So but, um, I've got the. I'll just. I just had happened. So hello to Jenny. Um. So I've seen because she loves the birds because she's got the really giant arm. It's a huge. It's a corella like that sort of thing, the big thing that sits on her shoulder. It's like a very big. Like I wouldn't want to get bitten by a bird like that. <laughs> oh, the big, a uh, big, huge, like a uh, white bird that also has aggressive some of that. That's called the cockatoo. Not the, it's. I think it's different from the cockatoo because the coloring is is a bit different. Um, I don't think it really has a big. The crest doesn't really stick out. It's like a, it's a huge ass thing, oh. but it's got like a a red around the eyes, and it's. I think they call it a corella or something like okay. that. It was, yeah, because that bird was like um, like they're really really nice. Like when they're um, if they're tame or everything like that. Because I've I've met one before and it was really um lovely. It was like kind of crawling around me and everything like that. Mm -hmm. It was like kind of a touch me and. Yeah, but I'll stick to the, this one's a bit smaller and they don't like, um, because those large ones, they can live to like, yeah, 80 or something like that. So you got to like a ring. Oh, wow. Yeah. You got to like put it in the will and say, <laughs> that's, li life. that's literally a friend for life. <laughs> yeah. And my, like, my great, great, um, grand. And if you don't have any kids, then you think, okay, it's got to go down to my nephew and then like, you know, his son, <laughs> all that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, I, I want to finish up on like the, the uh, the gossip between like Baron and Michael because the recent developments that I've like heard from today or watched and something like that. It's like after Michael said, you know what, I'd be willing to go if you pay for me and something like that, set up a crowdfunding stage and then like fund it so that I can go with the, like he yeah. said, he wants the travel hotel and all that stuff. Uh, Baron then said, my origin page for you i will promote it and stuff like that and that's where it's like and michael finally said and he made another video today or something like that earlier and uh said on twitter several times like well if that's case if i had to do all the work if i had to set up the crowdfunding page and stuff like that then i'm not going i wasn't interested to go anyway i would have been maybe willing to go if everything was paid for me but i probably wouldn't and i'd be more willing to go with like tim would tim blake the military opinion would go with me to it and stuff like that but tim didn't show any interest of going anyway uh and so since tim wasn't going michael's like yeah i'm not gonna go i'm especially not gonna set up go for me i don't know myself. whether that would work i think it's probably it'd probably make it worse because i kind of know yeah. um i don't really know michael that well to be honest i kind of know tim okay because like um so I'm kind of on good terms with him. Um, Tim's a cool know. dude. He, his songs are awesome. Yeah, because, Tim, because Tim will probably like, um, because he's actually more kind of friendly with the, I guess the other, if we want to call it the other side, like, um, Oh yeah. Tim has probably, like several, used to, Tim used to do like several hangouts with like a bunch of people because he's just a nice guy, but he never like compromised his positions or his principles on things. He would challenge right. those people he's friendly with no, uh, just, on like, things he disagree with. Yeah, I mean, if he puts a bit of like, if a couple of puts a couple of drinks inside of him, he's going to be fine. But and even and even the rest of the like, um, with the whole crowd, it's like it's not like they're all really. None of them are really that bad. I mean, it's like mm -hmm. when I think of like Memory Holiday, like because I've seen her Twitter feed and she seems like really, um, she seems like a very nice woman. Uh, Chrissy, uh, Chrissy Osti said that Memory Hard is a really sweet person and something like that. So yeah. I, I have no interactions with like her. So I'm just going off of what I've heard from like someone like Chrissy Osti. And I like Chrissy Osti a lot. Yeah, yeah. And so a lot of people have actually said that. And then um, also like Sugar Tits as well. So that's Bearings Mrs. Like apparently like she's very like um like she's really quite nice. And she's very talented as well. Like I'll, I'll admit that. Um, 
it's like because when it comes to music videos like um because there was one they did a song together on his channel like i think it's called patrick it's like his second channel and i sort of had to listen to it and they put together a really it was a really good song it was like someone doing the piano and then they were doing the vocals like she was in the lead and he was doing the harmonies but like yeah it was really i want to hear more of that because i don't really i'm not really interested in that kind of you know that song at the end that he does that um like give me better days give me better day, like I, i'm not familiar with that one or something like that the song it's a song that he plays at the end kind of that metal type um like screeching type stuff for us oh okay and they like if they both sing together it's like okay that sounds good like you should put that on an album and like i would actually i'd listen to that <laughs> i'm a big fan of metal actually i like and that's something that tim and blake tim black and i will have in common he in fact turned me on to a band emperor and i i tim i like emperor a lot and so like that i also corrected him one time he was on the live stream playing video games and he was playing uh queen's Reich, operation Mindcrime. and i say like, oh i love this song 1980s metal cl- uh, progressive metal awesomeness and he goes no it's not 1990s it sounds like 1980s but it's 1990s song like that hold on let me track it and check my pill oh no 1988 you corrected me you proved me wrong yes i am summer in the key the man who proved tim blake wrong once anyway <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's kind of that um it's a bit gossipy really isn't it um it's, i don't know it'd be good to see the it's I, I, who cares i mean they're gonna have like they're all gonna have their good time that's at the end of the day like i don't really i don't know even though i've made two videos about it okay like at the because sometimes i take two videos and then i have to come to a conclusion you know what you mean sometimes your thoughts are kind of evolving after you make each video, well, that's that's what happens to me anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. My thoughts evolve all, uh, quite a bit too. I can like change my position within one conversation, yeah, I, yeah. honestly. And so, um, and then like when I was I was in the middle of kind of live streaming last night, and at, at the end, I was just having my concluding thoughts, and I was like, you know what? It's like not even um, the whole idea of this echo chamber thing. Like, why are we still using that word? It's like I just think we've got a natural instinct to kind of. Of course, you want to hang out with your friends, like, you know, when you go to those conferences, like, you know, um, you know, and I'm just happy, like, because I take the, because I don't really, it's something that I don't get to do because, you know, um, and I'm going to, I'm going to be really honest, like, because I don't really have that much, like, I don't really have that many friends on the, like, in the, in the real world. Like, that's why, that's why I do YouTube and that's why I stream because, um, I guess, like, it's kind of like the, um, I think they're very much real. It's not like they're fake French. I think they're very real. Right. And that's why I that's why I enjoy having people like um on my channel and I enjoy being on like streams because it's like a it's a social outlet. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, even though it's like kind of like uh, interactions of like we're seeing each other through a sheet of glass and stuff like that, and yeah. of course cross cross screen distances, I think the technology allows it to or for people meeting each other online and then get married. It's not a far fetched idea. Remember, twenty years ago, I was like, you met someone online, you don't know who you're meeting online. But now with this kind of thing and happening on our phones, the video chatting on our phones. We finally had the video phone calls we always seen in science fiction in like the 90s and stuff like that and stuff like that. And it's this Google yeah. Hangouts are like that sort of thing. So, yeah, and 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 also for me, I also like grew up with only like one best friend in my entire life. So like, even though recently I kind of like I found myself uh, invited into a group of friends uh, in real life and something like that. I can totally get what you're saying by like your only real friends uh, or most of your real friends are online. And I see no shame in that, honestly. No, I mean, that's like some people should just admit because I know that there's a lot of like fuckers that like some of them are really like, um, because there's some YouTubers who are absolute fuckers that I don't really like. And I'm thinking, yeah, you probably don't have any. That's that's what people often do. That is like kind of like a, a fighting words. They say you probably have no friends in real life, and then it's like, and I was like, I kind of just own that. Like, I'm just going to admit to that and just say I don't really yeah. know people in real life that well. It's it's not that I'm snobby or anything like that. It's just like I suffer. There's a lot of like anxiety that I have, like in in so. Oh yeah, that's social anxiety. is a serious thing, and so like yeah. that, yeah. Not really a social anxiety, but it's just the actual like general anxiety of every like right. like everyday kind of anxiety, and it's like ah. Mm. Uh, and it just makes it hard. There's certain places that I just don't really want to like go to, like when it comes to like movie theaters or like 
Oh yeah, I know. I know people who never go to the movie theaters because they hate the crowds. So they always wait for like Star Wars or something to go on Netflix. Like one guy said, "Okay, what should I know about Star Wars Rogue One before I watch it? When 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 does it happen?" And because I'm the, I am some random geek, I'll be like, "Tell you, okay, so it happens right before A New Hope, and definitely after Revenge of the Sith, and so like that." But this is where the Rebels get the battle plans for uh, the Death Star. That's what the Rogue One is. Good movie, in my opinion, too. Yeah, and so that's, I mean, I guess, and then when I see, I don't know, I guess it's like a vicarious joy that I have, like, when, when like, no matter, I don't, I don't really care what side of the debate you're on, really. I mean, um, because, you know, a, a get-together is a get-together. Um, So, you know, I'm happy for those guys on that side. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not expecting the, I'm not expecting the discourse to be anything that's profound, you know, mystical yeah. thing. But the only criticism I have is, like, they seem to ignore, like, the, it's the middle of the road type of people who kind of get overlooked. It's like the one that comes to mind for me is Noel Plum, like because he still mm. makes a contribution to the to the atheism type discourse. Because he's done some, and some of the videos are really quite profound when it when it sticks to the religion and when it comes to the drama sort of thing. He's kind of like he's very much a centrist on that. He's like right on the, which is I mean I don't, I don't care about that, but it's um, but some of the it's very profound and very wise. Some of the things he talks about because. Like, even though I'm not an atheist myself, I can kind of understand the progression of the conversation because it's about religion. And it seems to be that, um, like, a lot of people on that side have kind of abandoned that because they're, it's mm. more of the kind of, they're not really taking themselves seriously anymore. Mm, yeah. that's, that's what I see anyway. Um, but whereas some well, of them... Well, we're thinking with like like atheists and something like that it's that like the atheans of youtube is not as what it used to be because well, no. well let's face it seriously uh atheists like answer one question it's like is there a god they say no and where do you go from there and so kind of like uh steve shy's uh it's kind of like the atheist concert a uh, conference attack the one that steve shy has been promoting he and he's been promoting it every week is kind of like established that we're atheists and we answered yes to like is, is we answer one question is there a god and we say no but we sh we could do so much more than that and stuff like that yeah. and so that's part of it the discussion there at least yeah in terms of the discourse because that was a really interesting question that um that noel sort of put up and it was a response to the distributors or something like that um so what was it? It was some um, sort of like what happens here. So where does a conversation go from here? So even though you know our, the life may not have a particularly religious purpose per se, you know, um, there's obviously other purposes. So you know, so um, what do we replace that with? Because you know, usually religion is kind of a spiritual quest, or um, if especially if you're agnostic or you're not really um, you're kind of undecided. There's kind of a questing that's going on that, that could be spiritual or metaphysical or whatever. And that's mm -hmm. kind of, and I've been through my own spiritual crisis where I've come to the point where I've accepted sort of where I am and where my positions are coming from. But still, even with the atheism, you sort of ask yourself, you know, what is the, is there a grand plan or a grand mission? So what's our, the meaning of our existence or whatever? So the conversation, like, I'd love to see it divert into that kind of philosophical type um, oh, yeah. thing like that. So, um, because there's still like grand purposes and we can still see things from a cosmic perspective, even if you are, oh, yeah. honest, there's still like a large kind of grand vision. And so there's still so much, there's still a lot of interesting things you could talk about. So that's like, um, that's why I'd like to see the people who are more in the middle of the road getting represented, those kind of um, like either for me, the side really probably better off with the, the anti side to have sort of like a middle ground. Type oh pattern. yeah. That uh, yeah, that that's the interesting. Uh, I'm going to pick up on like when something you mentioned about like uh, the fa well. One thing I'm going to answer the question for myself is there a purpose in life and something like that. Well, I'm not going to I'm not going to seek for purpose in life outside of myself or like a other force that will give me purpose. No, I for me I am going to create my own purpose something like that, like a philosophy or like set of principles to live by and i think a great purpose that one can give themselves themselves is to try to like make the world a better place or like leave it a better place than how you found it and stuff like that or if you think it's already an awesome place and stuff like that how about you maintain that awesomeness of that place and stuff like that and now and, and some people actually do kind of like or some scientists i should say kind of do in a sense like how you, know, you mentioned about like the greater power of like a cosmic cosmos or something like that yeah i think like i like the spirituality or philosophy behind like what carl sagan did i bet carl sagan was like a atheist or at least agnostic something like that but i like how he said that 
We are way, <clears throat> we are all made from star stuff. The cosmos, it's within us. We're all made of star stuff. We are a way for the cosmos to know itself. And that's something that Neil deGrasse Tyson also picks up on. Because he would, Neil deGrasse Tyson, if asked, is there a God, he'll say, or does scientists believe in God? He would say, listen, in a way, scientists do believe in a God. They do accept a greater power, in a sense, already existing because they're in awe of the amazing power of nature. They, you, they fully embrace the forces of nature and stuff like that. And because they want to study it, the weak nuclear force, the strong nuclear force, the uh, electrum force of electromagnetism and gravity forces, stuff like that. It is so fascinating that we are all connected chemically, you no, know, to each other biologically, to the earth chemically, and to the rest of the universe atomically. Yeah, because that's the um, because I kind of talk, I I kind of speak in those terms as well. Like I kind of speak in terms of um, I speak in terms of ele of maybe in terms of element because you know how people have that you know that debate that they that keeps going on like you know are there seventy six genders or are there kind of binary genders or whatever and because I can kind of because I can speak from kind of experience and being kind of I guess very dissident because. That's what I've kind of admitted. Like, I'd be better off if I had been like born in like a, a female body. But it's like, but I'm not. I couldn't be trans though because, like, I wouldn't because I'm too kind of I guess manly or butch. Yeah. So it's like, okay, I just got to accept that you're kind of in the middle of the road. So it's kind of like a genderlessness type thing. But I sort of I don't really get into that, you know, binary, non-binary because it's kind of a debate that's kind of like just. I don't know. I'm not. It doesn't really interest me that much. But I tend to look at it in terms of like elements. So I think of alchemy. So there's like um, I think of these two mixtures that are going on, like the you know, what the manly features and the womanly features, and you know they the they estrogen, bubble around and testosterone and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So it's some there's some kind of element that's going on, like in in an alchemy sense. And so you're mixing those two chemicals together, and it's creating this like bubbling thing that's in your psyche or whatever, and then. You know, and, the levels the for, and the levels for both of those like mixture of things can be different for different people and stuff like that. Yeah, that's that's what it's about. So um, that's kind of the that's the, kind of the basis in which I think about that. And then you could also look at the astrological profiles, like which of your elements you're missing. So I'm missing like a fiery um, because I'm good. I've got the air sign. I've got water signs, but I'm lacking that fire type of it, and that's considered like a masculine type of energy so i think of it in terms of elements sometimes as well as kind of the alchemy process so it's just because you know my um my ingredients are mixed a bit weirdly like that it's it's not a pattern for normal human development to have it like it because it should be normally people should be at like 90 or 10 or something like that but when right. you mix it like 40 50 or something like that then it's kind of awkward you might feel like you don't really belong to a like to a particular you know um category Right. I mean, for me, it's like, I, I definitely am I cis. I mean, I'm definitely cis. I'm, if there's any kind of category I would put myself in, it'll be questioning. But yet, I tried to question myself that much. And I was like, no, no, I, I like being a guy. I mean, I am a guy that would wear Wonder Woman leggings and stuff like that. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yes. That's cool. Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah this uh, love uh, yeah, yeah. it's like that's part of the thing. It's almost like the yeah, yeah let's... but I, I yeah, but I, but I define my own masculinity. I've just fully accepted that. What is what what does it mean to be man? Or wait a minute, what does my shirt say? What is a man? Yeah, yeah, it says what is a man. This is but throw off the rest of the shirt. This is Count Dracula from. Whoa. Dracula. That reference to, Cas to yeah, Count Dracula. Count Dracula. That's a reference to uh, Castlevania and Symphony of the Night. So, oh, but what is a man? Seriously, uh, whatever that that man, that person, or that woman yeah. wants to be, and so like that. Yeah. So it's like you so got. That's all. Uh, I always see it. Yeah, because that's that's the way I kind of see it. I'll just say, um, like you know, when people say, you know, you got to man up and grow a set of balls, it's like no, just like you don't want to tell our sons and our nephews and all of it, uh, like. The young men in our lives we want to say um you know like don't man up just grow up and be whatever man you want to be like there's some um, it's just bullshit that sort of thing 
it's okay to cry too. It's if if you're crying, if anyone's crying, that means something, either in, either physically or emotionally, that is damaging you and stuff like that. And the people can cry mm. for many different reasons, which is why maybe maybe I used to like try to hold back the tears as I'm watching a movie and something like that. But now the now this is like now oh, screw it. No no. If this movie moves me to tears, and I'm going to say. That's an awesome movie. I cried at the end of Logan twice. There's several movies like Summer it, Wars, War of Wolf Children. I don't think I've been if you make me cry, I'll uh, I'll cry. Yeah, I mean, um, because you know, if men can like, if men come to movies and they ejaculate to film, then you know, there's nothing wrong with um, there's nothing wrong with like a couple of tears coming down if that's what they want. <laughs> I I was not I thinking to... it in that way, but I'm not, I don't blame you for thinking it that way. And yeah, yeah. I guess I yeah. don't. Have... Like um, <laughs> I only have a problem if they ejaculate and they make a mess. It's, it's really, dude, you just clean it up. It's it depends like what like it depends on what the movie. Like it would have to be a porno movie. Like it's like exactly. Like, I I can understand that at a porno. Like, if they ejaculate to like um, I don't know. I'm thinking, trying to think of something that's really messed up. Like to the human centipede. Okay, that's like you're talking, <laughs> you've got something wrong with the. Oh, I don't know. I don't want to shame anyone, but it's like it's true, true. Let's just call it a whatever bit. they're into. Whatever they're into. Yeah, there's. I don't want to do that shaming. No, it's kind no. of, yeah, it's kind of interesting. Also, like when you're the, the asexual orientation as well. Like it's not so much. Um, like I don't. I don't kind of mention it because it's like kind of. Um, whatever they call it, like oppression points or whatever, or like LGBT solidarity or whatever. It's just kind of like, right. it's it's an interesting lens through which you can look through the world because you get removed and you can kind yeah. of be in places where nobody, are, like where other men have not necessarily been. So because women are able to read those signs, like it's, some of them have a gaydar, like a lot of women, they, they're attached to gay guys because there's no kind of, they know that it's strictly platonic so they can have those friends. Right. But then, then asexual guys, like they must have another level of radar to detect that as well. Like they seem to understand that well, and you kind of get even more accepted into a lot of circles with um, with um, like amongst so you can sort of hang around with um women in a very relaxed kind of way. Kind of you're blurring yeah, the you boundary that, lines yeah. a bit, yeah. And it's um, so you kind of hear that you kind of hear their perspective um, and like their kind of raw honesty when you hear that sort of thing, and it's like. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's. I think it's a good thing that um. I think people just tend to be vulgar. Like it's like we've got that tribalism. Like when men get together, they tend to like get really um vulgar. But then, I think locker women are talk. like. I think sometimes yeah, it's the locker room talk, but it's also like the. It's probably the dinner table. Sorry, the dinner party because everyone seems to congregate according to their gender or whatever. So, mm -hmm. the men seem to congregate together and they talk about and they tell some vulgar jokes and dine out and stuff like that. Yeah, and I don't necessarily. I don't think that's really something to be like. Um, because I've heard this thing about like the male allies. I think that they're expected to, you know, call out sexism or whatever, like when they're in those kind of spaces. But I don't know. I think we just have to be honest about like the way humans behave. That there's like um, because you know, because I sort of ask, you know, what about the ladies? Like, are you really ex are you there exchanging crochet recipes at your table while you're drinking? <laughs> I'm like, no, you're telling porkies if you're telling my, you're extra. unless if you discuss the size of your yarn stash, you might be getting a bit cheeky. <laughs> like that, um... you, you, you just reminded me actually, because like funny enough about, well, talking about being asexual in a uh, high school for on um, the one high school musical I was, I was a part of, uh, I was in a fun thing happened under the way to the forum and I played a eunuch. What that means is that, like, when I'm off yeah. stage, I'm often off stage with the other girls that were on part of the cast that would play the courtesans. So, kind of like me and one other guy, uh, we were part. We actually did overheard that kind of conversations. I and or maybe something about like my particular like drama club or drama class in like uh, my high school where we. The, the we were just more open, but the women were kind of open to that kind of sexual talk too. And actually, from hearing from other cast members from like years past and plays past and stuff like that, they were just kind of more open. So in, I actually had an experience where it's like, oh, I'm, I'm a guy, but uh, they don't seem to mind. I'm a guy here listening to their kind of like talk about like, who, what kind of guy do you like in our cast and stuff like that? Well, there are two are over there. Oh yeah, but they don't count. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's probably like a eunuch. That's kind of like what, or a shaman. That's probably my description of like the role in life. It's kind of like you kind of, you kind of seeing the world like from a different kind of lens, and you're seeing the difference. There, there is like some differences between the way people act. I mean, like 
it seems like guys tend to there's a visual element to that's connected there's a visual responsiveness to pornography whereas they, like, they, they actually did test that yeah they, they actually proved, yeah. they proved that epidemiologically at least in studies so there's been studies yeah. on that yeah it's even like um whereas women it tends to be a little bit more imaginative because you know they they, they read their pornography because like the they're just the number of they, I think I think it's like they're more emotionally connected and stuff like that. Um, yeah. Dr. Dr. True Pinsky has like talked to like a, a porn director, a female porn director, and she that porn director I forgot who it was or I don't remember. <clears throat> she has often said that guy throughout her whole career, guys want to watch people have sex. Women want to know why those people are having sex that's that person's general experience is like yes yeah, so that's probably why they read like okay 50 shades of gray because apparently it was bad at doing the bdsm thing it did like a bad job with that but the just the number of women who are reading that particular like even any types of erotic fiction so it's more of an imaginative type realm whereas i think that men they're a bit more limited i think they've got to have it all like fed to them spoon fed <laughs> like to like it has to go right yeah, to the eyes like you, 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 <laughs> stuff like that maybe you, uh, okay i think you're back uh yeah and, and, or like not even before 50 shades of grace 50 shades of grace was kind of like the famous example but like they women oh, i think i could be wrong but then again i'm a guy i'm mansplaining right here in a way women always had tra tra trashy romance novels and stuff like that with with the dirty thicker and stuff like that at least from what i've seen in pop culture uh representation and stuff like that so take that for yeah. what it is Cool. Yeah. Um. So I had some fun with that. Um. Now, what was the other thing? Um. Maybe I'll get you. I don't know whether you've sort of looked at this before. Like one of the things that everyone talks about is postmodernism. Mm, yeah. It's it's one of those things. It was it was kind of an interesting discussion because I'm sort of seeing both sides. Um. Look, I think from my pers I'll just explain my perspective and what I think of it. Um. Because I've had bad experiences with with particular courses that really relied on that kind of um. Especially the Foucault um like derrida type, type stuff um i don't think that like that that postmodern is like in of itself i don't think it's a bad thing in of itself because it has its place in philosophy um and i'd say that like foucault was kind of easy to read um like the ideas they make sense like for that time for the context um like i i think the only bad thing about it is that when people kind of cling on to these ideas or these philosophers that, and they use them religiously i mean it's like you think mm -hmm. of an instructor who just they just grip onto Foucault and it's like everything is all about this one author and that's the whole like framework they're using like that that in itself is the problem it's not the not the philosophy itself it's the use of it and it's the application and the way in which you can sometimes corrupt certain disciplines i think um, well, for me, okay, so postmodernism, uh, for, well, one thing for me, I, I've never gone to college and done a college course. Philosophy does interest me. It does sound fascinating, something like that. Uh, but my experience for postmodernism really just came from the YouTube videos I watched. Uh, Peter Coughlin did a video response to Arm Skeptic's video on postmodernism. Oh, <laughs> that was funny. He, he and, should yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Arm Skeptic totally did. Because not only did Peter Coughlin did a video on response to that, Gwen No Fear, the video response to that, that was an excellent video, Gwen No Fear, and I, I follow her, I sub her, and I'm a patron of her and stuff like that. She's awesome. Uh, she's just getting me to, she, after she did like a Yugo uh, deck tech, essentially, I was like, hmm, I could do that for my YouTube channel. Here's a deck tech of like mono green modern budget ver version, stuff like that. Anyway, uh, <laughs> but also Dr. Layman did a video response to Armor, Gr Armor Skeptic's video on postmodernism and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, and then there was that one hangout that Christy Winters hosted that she had, I guess, uh, Alex or something like that, who's from a podcast. And he was the one that like was very familiar with philosophy and stuff like that. And so he prepared a, a lot for that to give just a brief, a brief, like a uh, kind of overall crash course on postmodernism and stuff like that. And that one hangout, which was three hours long, had uh, Christy, American Anarchist, um, that the guy, uh, Alex, uh, Ted joined, Quay No Fear joined, uh, and Tim Blake, and then Blanc Spronger joined much later. Was so there like one that. with Was there one with Kevin like talking about postmodernism? Because I was kind of talking about Jordan Peterson's type. That one, that one came later. Uh, that, that one came, came later, later, like a week ago. So Jordan, this hangout like, like happened over a month ago, or something like that. Yeah. And I'm just gonna say I listened to that one postmodern hangout like six times already because, yeah, the brief introduction of like the overhaul history of postmodernism was fascinating to me. How he mentioned 
Marx and Kant and then Nietzsche and like that. Nietzsche is the one philosopher I actually read his book on. And because I'm an atheist or I'm not so gay, see it, I've read The Antichrist. Mm. And I had to reread that one because as I was reading it, I was fascinated, I was interested, I was engaged and wanted to learn more. But I had to look up almost every almost every other word in that book on every page because <laughs> well, I'm also dyslexic. And it's like, I've never seen this word before. Google it. What does it mean? Oh, okay. So it's a an Italian word or a German word for this. And oh, okay, I, I think I know the context to it, but still, it's just difficult to read anyway. Yeah, I mean, um, I'm not going to pretend to really know everything about it. Like, I've kind of got an overall idea. I know the names of the and what their philosophies are. It's um, same here, pretty much. I guess, I guess from experience, it's it's like how it can be sometimes miss. It can be overused. I think it's the yeah, the yeah. only problem that I have with it is or when people attach really. themselves religiously. I mean, and that's where they're getting it wrong. They're saying that the postmodern is evil because no, it's not the no, it's not the philosophy itself that is bad. It's people who take it and they like ram it down like the the throat, and they kind of rely. And I think it's a very lazy thing. It's kind of a lazy way out of. Oh, going through because we've got to go through a lot of different channels to understand a topic we've got to read a lot of things and sometimes it seems like an easy explanation this kind of fix all solution um so we just go straight to Foucault and it's kind of like a kind of a wall that um so I think the experience I had with it, it was very bizarre um because I've only done ever one course that involved that it's because I've done my sort of dissertation and finished the maths training and then after that I went back and I sort of did some units where I could do education units to do that and they kind of talked about that because Jordan Peterson, he had that in his list, was the education. And oh, I think he yeah, that like, list, of, yeah. <laughs> okay, I understand you, but that's a really shitty way of going about it, okay? <laughs> Especially when some of his talking points are a little postmodern themselves because he does yeah, have a exactly. bit of it in there. Yeah. Um, and I remember the first semester when I was doing that, we were doing the um, psychology of learning. So it was developmental psychology. So we learned the best and the worst of the psychologists and each of the people in their particular field, so all the way from Freud and then Piaget, and obviously, and I honestly think, post I think postmodernism can be applied there because it's not a philosophy; it's a methodology. It's just kind yeah. of a why way to examine like meta narratives, something like that. It's yeah. for you to question yourself. On, like, yeah, so the psychology itself well, was. Uh, why do I treat people's myths you have a problem with and stuff like that? Like questioning yeah. everything. People have a problem with questioning everything and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean the cause, um the psychology was a different course in its own because that was that was fine. I mean it wasn't um there wasn't anything weird about it. It was just you know going through each of the different schools of thought, and then I think you know as a student you sort of take on a particular position. Um, like yep. you know I guess a I guess a pedagogy is what you call it when you kind of combine the different philosophies and obviously that mm -hmm. changes with experience, what your pedagogy is going to be, but that kind of frames your initial pedagogy. So that was, that was fine. And then, you know, the next semester was a course on the socio-cultural um, context. And I thought, okay, that's interesting. So we've got the psychological context. Now we're looking at the socio-cultural and this yeah. is where the general collapse was happening because we were all sort of looking around the room thinking, you know, it looks, it sounds like these priests are kind of murmuring to each other and, it kind of fits in. There's a certain Marxist type thing that's which is not bad in itself, um, right. or kind of a progressive idea. But there was nothing about this that was progressive. It was just this um, kind of really complicated, impenetrable language. And like the the true Marxism or the true progressivism is to take knowledge and to really democratize knowledge and to spread it and the right. appreciation to the general public. And so it seems that that particular snobbishness and that's what sometimes gets attached to postmodernism. There's people who yeah. kind of they have a very snide attitude towards, and and it's not the philosophers; it's the people who are practicing. That's the because I can't. It's stress academia, it. so I don't. So I don't get straw man saying that um, I'm kind of attacking postmodernism. It's just the there's some practitioners who take a very um, because they're saying these words like this is Foucault and Derrida and Lacan, and they take a very there's a very smug sort of attitude, and the and they develop this kind of language out of that that's almost impenetrable and it's almost a and it's so ironic that you know Foucault's work is about the critique of power structures and mm -hmm. at the same time you know the professors are kind of putting this power structure on us saying you know they're, they're giving us this language that we cannot decipher and we're sort of looking at each other thinking like is this the these are high priests that are murmuring to each other yeah. and eventually eventually you're just learning how to play around with the words and to give that so that's an example of that's probably very extreme I think of of and there was nothingness. There was, um, 
And it was a complete straw man. It was hostile towards psychology. It was a very snide kind of criticism of psychology. And it was mm. presenting Foucault and it was like, okay, that's that's the history of psychology. So the beginnings were not very laudable. Okay, it was it was kind of the mental institutions were very, you know, kind of torturous, okay, very cruel. But well, yeah, the, I mean, psychology had the past of like, oh, we well, well, let's do this experiment, like electrocute a frog, something like that. Ooh, yeah. this does something. Well, based on our knowledge right now, if it does something, it must be good. But that's the thing with science. The more we learn, and it's like, oh, wait, this is not doing anything, or it's not doing what we say oh, it's doing, we got to abandon that. And there's many pra medical practices that abandon um, it. Uh, throughout the not just in psychology but just in medical history right now actually like yeah. dr pinsky said that the history the whole history of like of medicine throughout the whole world is something like that the history of medicine the practice of medicine in this history has been the practice of placebo up until the invention of antibiotics and stuff like that that's what mm. essentially it is and so that's true for medical psychology as well in this past yeah. and stuff like that. I mean, what I, was, what I was puzzled about was, okay, they were presenting this thing on there, but they were using that to really straw man psychology saying, but, yeah. okay, yes, you've told us what it was like back then. That was really bad. And the idea of the prison system, the panopticon, and it's applying that. And they're kind of like snidely saying, you know, look at the teachers there surveying the students. They're, they've got their, they've got the panopticon. And I'm thinking, well, okay, what would you rather teachers do? Do you want us to just like not look at the kids at all? Just let them do whatever the fuck they want? What are you people talking about? It was so far removed from reality. Like, I don't think they've been into a school before. Like, of course, like, you, that's part of the job when, you, when you're on the yard duty or whatever. You've got to look around everywhere because someone's going to get into a fight or something like that. You've got to intervene. And um, so if it's a panopticon, then that's fine. We have to accept it for what it is. And then it had nothing to say about contemporary psychology. Like, it was because we're directed towards educational psychology, which is looking at the psychology of development. And we're looking at where students. Oh, yeah, that's are. very important. That's very and, interesting. And these are, the, these are the fundamental tools we have. But yet, they had nothing to address that part of the education. It was using this kind of straw man that they projected onto psychology, um, like from all this stuff. And I guess, like some of the other attitudes I th in literature sometimes. Um, and that's what it sometimes fosters when people think about it. Sometimes it's a very snide sort of, um, it's a removal from the text in a very cynical sort of oh, way. Yeah. Um, because people think that's the trendy thing to do when they take on these new kind of imported philosophers. And again, like the philosophers are not bad, like they had their use, but I think they'd be rolling around their graves if they saw what was happening. Because, you know, the idea of removing yourself from the text or whatever and, and kind of you know, chopping it up and, you know, it doesn't necessarily work for something like poetry because, you know, with poetry, like poetry is not just a text or a language. So we're not right. really mediating anything through language. Like what we're doing is we're engaging in a very sensory experience. It's pretty much all the senses. So the metaphor is something that activates the sight. So, and there's also the motion, the poem. So, you know, whenever, if I teach somebody how to read a poem, which sometimes, you know, um, if I deal with like homeschool kids, like some of them have English, things like that. And, often they're, they're often very lazy about like what they read. It's like, um, cause they'll say, okay, I have to write like about a literature paper. And it's like, okay, what's the text that you've chosen? And they say, oh, I don't know. And it's like, and then and I'll think, okay, you could read a novel, but then it'll take you like five weeks to read a novel. So what I do is I just choose like a, I do a poem. Oh yeah. That's much shorter and much that's, that's easier much, to yeah, in, in consume. Yeah. And it's like, it's complex. It's a complex and it's sophisticated. Um, mm -hmm. So something like that. And then going through stanza by stanza to draw out the metaphor. So, and then, you know, you're encouraging them to say, okay, imagine that, you know, the poet is a, because it's cinematic as well. Uh, there's also the sense of Oh, yeah, but, well. I mean, the, the Jabberwocky, but where the Jabberwocky, the jaws that yeah. clench, the, 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 no, the claws that crunch, the jaws that pop, they wear the jump jump bird and shun the various fender snatch. Yes, so saying. there's something about that. I mean, even the earlier, um, like some of it's kind of still in motion. It's, it's kind of like a still picture, but some of it does move around. So you are following the, because you're trying to attach a cinematic lens. And that's what I said to the, that's what I say to students. If they sort of try to interpret a poem, I just say, you know, imagine that, you know, this is a, um, a camera and those words have a camera attached to them. So what's happening in the experience? So are you flying around? And then, you know, when you look at something like the second coming, which is the, you know, it starts off with a, a falcon like circling around the sky and then, you know from there on and then um it's also it's so connected as well to music so it's connected to dance so it's a there's the whole body experience really when it comes to poetry and that's where sometimes when we take that attitude um if we're trying to apply this philosophy towards attitude 
towards, I mean, um, poetry, um, etc. It doesn't necessarily work because it's not really so much right. a brain and it's not really it's a kind, text. It kind of lose the focus or something like that. You really lose the focus, yeah, because you can't really, it doesn't really apply to poetry when when it's like the whole senses itself. It's not just the, um, I guess it's not just the eyes and it's not just the, the text. It's the whole sensory body experience, especially when dance comes into it because that's the, mm -hmm. that's the natural evolution of poetry because that's where songs come from, really. And so yeah, sometimes... Interpret you know, dance and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So there's an interpretive dance that comes along with a particular song. So that's also that's the whole body as well, and that's coming from poetry. So that's why I'm kind of critical of that kind of approach. And there's also students as well who've dropped out of grad school. Like that's the kind of a few stories I hear there and there from literature departments because well, they yeah, said ContraPoints, that ContraPoints also dropped out of grad school. In fact, uh, she did an old video of like why she quit academia, and this kind of ties into our theme of this hangout. Is that like she kind of quit because it was almost like a echo chamber in itself. She noticed that like yeah. in higher levels of academia is a bunch of people, a bunch of high priests, like you said, a bunch of professors sitting around talking about essentially comparatively higher levels of a certain high level form of chess strategies and stuff like that and so that's where it's like some of that disconnect from like the general public to academia is and that's where it's like sometimes when terms of from academia from feminist academia gets filtered down into like the general public in pop feminism like jezebel everyday feminism or buzzfeed and stuff like that that where the pu general public gets a strong visceral reaction to term. what do you mean toxic masculinity what do you mean rape culture what do you mean yeah, it's, like, right, that, like that. it's it's exactly right like people like the minute you actually like to somebody else who's not really looked at it i mean obviously because i've watched i've been exposed to these ideas of course mm -hmm. i mean some of it's a bit, a bit mis i mean i don't agree with the whole like some of the models i see there's some things that i'm thinking okay i don't really agree with that characteristic that mm -hmm. that, that behavior constitutes you know a contribution towards you know rape and I think with the rape culture, I tend to, I use the plural, yeah, like I, I, know, know, I know a lot of people use the singular because I think you can, because they look different. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. like the, the one you can think of is the, the Hollywood entertainment. It looks different because even though there's a lot of people who are very, um, I guess you could say they're economically well off, like a lot of actresses and actresses, but the, the power differential is, is so yes. huge. Okay. And mm -hmm. so that's why it looks very different, but then. You look at another one and it involves if i talk about men and boys there's particular ones there like we think of the example of the you know those really good looking kind of cougar type teachers who um yes oh you know, yeah if, of, i live in washington state mary Kay letourneau and something like that then again she just had one relationship that i know of and stuff like that weird thing about yeah. mary Kay don't know uh, she did went to jail she's sure of her time she was definitely convicted of yeah, yeah. Rape. that's what she but did the, she, the, 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 the was 12 years old but yet here's the crazy thing it, for, as far as I heard from like 10 years ago, they're still together. And the kid, uh, Billy Fuel, it's a DJ in like the Seattle area. So yeah. that's kind of crazy. It's sort of a, it's like a societal that. attitude because like even the even the victim himself, because right. even even if he initiated the, I mean, it's still statutory rape. I mean, but exactly. the attitude towards the people are so nonchalant. They say, oh, but it's different for men. Like it's different for young boys. Like they're going to grow up thinking they're the, um, they're the king shit and then their friends are probably high five and saying oh you got with the, the hot teacher you know high five and i'm thinking what like this this is right yeah it's such a so that's like that's the, probably the yeah another actually, and saying this is rape culture I, this that is an example of rape culture of how it's like yeah. we the, america all agrees that like if a 20 year old go or a 32 year old it's sexually advancing to a 14 year old like Roy, Roy moore and stuff like that with the allegations that they had that's like no that's wrong because a 14 year old girl doesn't want to have sex with a 30 year old guy or it's like most likely no that's not the case but yet a 14 year old dude having sex with a hot 30 year old cougar we're like yeah the guy wants it so like that but no that's you're right that's still rape i mean and if any guy talks about their first sexual experience being at like at 13 like like here's an example um in uh in the united states there's a nationally run radio show that used to be on the air called love line hosted by dr true pinsky mm. and his the last it's off the air now but the last uh co-host that dr true pinsky had was mike cathroot who was on uh, the local radio station morning show, Kevin and Bean, he was introduced there as Crazy Mike. Uh, but mm -hmm. Mike Cancer 
Westwood, while and when he became the co-host for Love Mind, finally admitted on air publicly of his first sexual experience was when he was thirteen with an eighteen-year-old girl, and he did, he that's how he always framed it as that that was his first sexual experience. Yeah. Just like that's where I lost my virginity, something like that. But Doctor True is like, but Doctor Vincent says, but Mike, that was rape. That was statutory rape. Yeah. And Mike was like, really? And that's one element of rape culture where we don't see 13 year old boys losing their virginity to an older person. Yeah. We don't see so, rape, but it literally is rape. I mean, we don't necessarily have to restrict the idea of that particular term. Like, in I call I call it the, the word that I use is cluster. Okay. Cause I'm probably, cause when I talk to the audience or whatever, I'm assuming that they don't really have. So if I say the word like the, the rape culture is this whole thing, then it's like, um, it's probably going to confuse people like that. So I just say this is a particular right. cluster. This is a cluster where there's yes. a really shitty attitude towards, there's a very toxic mm -hmm. attitude towards consent and rape, which mm -hmm. is, we're talking about the same thing, but I'm just using a different word just to sugarcoat it yes. around a bit. Um, but Oh yeah. Even, even antis will admit that like, they don't have a problem with what you're describing. Once you finally describe it, they just have the visceral reaction to the term. So we do have to like, yeah. Use a different term. Like instead of talk instead of toxic masculinity, call it like hyper masculinity, or as I like to call it, super machismo and something like that, or damaging machismo and something like that. Just I'll call it, I'll call different. It, I'll just call it the dark side of and even that and they, even the list of toxic masculinity, because I, I kind of disagree with some of it because they're using a very social constructivist because somebody mm -hmm. accused me because i I was doing a hangout and someone said that, you know, I misunderstood the term saying that it's based on, you know, cultural customs and gendered norms. So it's coming from a very yeah. social thing. So I think that's fine. Okay, let's look at the social aspects of it. But there's also, you know, a kind of, there are certain, I sometimes use the Freudian id. So the, the idea of mm -hmm. the primitive part of the brain that's kind of working. And sometimes we have to filter all that out of ourselves. So that's why, you know, men tend to play, you know, very deadly type of video games because they're filtering out the part of their id that's like coming out. I can of see their, that, yeah. um, The dark that's things coming out. So... But as I wouldn't say that's a cause of violence or, or, right. or, or sexism. It's just the fact that you're right. engaging this hypersexualized sort of stuff like pornography and things like that. So it's yeah. kind of the filter of like getting rid of all the dark shit out of your head and then so that you can, you know, return to society as a normal human being. <laughs> right. Well, I, I, okay. So I never, I never can agree with like media actually causing person to do an action and stuff like that. I never agree with no. that. But, but uh, it has been kind of proven. It's like, well, like, what can movies or media cause someone to vote? No, very, very unlikely. Can it cause a person to think about voting? Mm, it can. It can somewhat. Can a yeah. movie cause a person to think? Positively or negatively about voting. Yeah, I can. So the media it does it's not the media that's caused a person to be sexist, but the media can reinforce a worldview that they already have and so like that. Kind of you already have that well. Yes. So that it could, it could either re it could it could either reinforce it or it could be like releasing it. It's like it could be like kind of like getting it out of my getting this stuff out of our system. Oh whatever. yeah, definitely. That's part of the reason why it's got to come out. Yeah. It's got to come out somewhere. There's a lot of there's an inherent um, kind of darkness in it. any sort of humanity or, or like men, right. women, or whatever. And we've got to get dark things out of ourselves and release, like somehow, in, in I, whatever I, way is appropriate. I do generally agree for myself and stuff like that. I, I guess it's like people's anger or something like that, or people's frustration. They they generally do probably need a release of something like that of some kind. It's like stress reliever and stuff like that. And so yeah, pornography and violent video games and something like that can be that. So yeah, I, I can agree with that in yeah. some way. Yeah, yeah, could go. But at the same time, I think it's important to expand the market because obviously people do want to. There's obviously people who do want to have those kind of those video games out there that have kind of more of a, I guess, a progressive type of storyline. Oh, yeah. and, and that's fine. As long as it, as long as it adds, it, it supplements what's there. So it doesn't have to replace what we already have. Like we should keep right. all the things we have, but let's just put some. There, oh, there's always going to be violent first person shooters. There are always going to be big titty, like animes and stuff like that. They're always going to be big titty uh, yeah. video games characters. I mean, if they want to the then go for it, but give the, give the women some dicks to look at as well. Cause like equality. Exactly. It, it give the give the, but they yeah but some it basically especially especially if the the audience or people of that medium or are consumers the one that crave more different media more varieties all of that variety is the spice of life and yeah. so I think most any medium can just like serve well for variety and stuff like that yeah.
yeah, because there's a big differential. I don't, I don't know whether it's just me. Um, like some a lot, a lot of other people, when it comes to trans men, because that's because since I'm a men's like kind of, or oh, kind of like second wave MRA, whatever the fuck I am. Yeah. Like most people would just say, um, that's say second second wave MRA, like or men's liberation. So it's kind of like a little bit more closer to feminism than it is like the mainstream Paul right. A. Lamb's wing. And like what yeah. I um, I guess I guess trans men's issues are kind of the um. Because it's kind of a movement that's beyond me, so it's kind of like you know part of that is thinking, okay, what about sort of trans? So there's an intersectional type thing. So I think about um like you kind of think about trans men and what they go through, and one of the things that are there, and I don't know whether that's how to measure this, but it's like the differential between um what can I think? It's a differential between the representation in media, so the storytelling. Um, it's like people have shown me things of, of trans men. Um just out of curiosity, but it's coming from like animation or um, comic book drawings, et cetera. But this is kind of an independent, very kind of avant-garde type media, whereas, you know, it's not really in that big, you know, that mainstream plot. So we've seen some right. really, there's some really good stories for the trans women. Um, oh, yeah. And like, don't just tack it on for the sake of it. I mean, that's, that's stupid. It doesn't have to be a diversity right. quote, but just like a good story for the sake of a good story that can involve that because the, um, especially some of those prison dramas. Like I think it was Orange is a New Black had a really good kind of trans right. story and same with Australia as well. It was very, very well told and like well, a lot of people way, reacted. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're going to mention the uh, Australian prison drama Wentworth. It is on Netflix in my market in America and stuff like that. So, oh, you Americans, per the you suggestion gotta watch of the low, go if watch you, Wentworth. I should watch Wentworth yeah, soon. If you're, a, if you're a social justice like person, if you're an SJW, it's an SJW's way. It's, it's very exciting. Like it's um, it's shocking. It's violent. It's suspenseful. It's like it's an SJW wet drinks. It's got like a lot of the things. It's got like a trans story and the awareness of kind of like breast cancer risk for trans women. But and that's I guess that's the point I'm getting to is like the differential. It's like um, like comparatively, it seems like the trans men are not quite as visible in that way. Right. Yeah. It's like I'm not seeing yeah, it. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm. Mean, uh, a trans man, uh, Micaiah B, who's a friend of Christy, and like yeah. he used to like be on YouTube, but now he just like runs his own website, something like that. He did like tweeted out like all of these representation about like people like yes, SJWs or social justice types talking about trans women, trans women, trans women. What about trans man? Yeah, not that much, unfortunately. Yeah, and that's what, um, and that's where I think, um, like maybe the like with the men, like feminism has got like obviously if they want to like address that, that's probably they probably do because that's part of the if they're intersectional, that's like um, yeah. that'll be their thing. Um, but I think the I think the men's movement itself, like you know, it has a lot to, you know, it could be doing like a lot for that as well because I think it's an, it's an important thing, because especially like when you think of International Men's Day, like I think of, okay, what about the yeah. health concerns of trans men? Because that's like the risk, the, the cancer risks are different, but if we can kind of say, okay, like this is November, so let's like, um, you know, November, so let's all look after it. All of us men, you know, trans men yeah. and like the other men, like we should all like do this together in November. Um, oh, so yeah. it's kind of saying that's it's communicating. Why, that's why the, yeah, that's why the Movember is starting and stuff like that. It's just to bring awareness. Yeah. I remember, like, uh, I used to listen to this one radio host. He would always, like, he never, like, kind of, he never scoff at, like, the pink uh, baseball bats or the pink shoes for when the sports do, like, breast cancer awareness for women, stuff like that. Yeah. But they also did, like, uh, colon cancer awareness with powder blue, stuff like that. And this one radio mm. host would kind of just, like, oh, why do men also, like, need to know about that? It's, it's colon cancer. Is that big a deal? Well, Here's this latest statistics I heard. Uh, the chances of like women uh, getting cancer, just any kind of cancer, is one in three. And well, for, mm. for men, it's one in two. So uh, that's scary. from what I last heard. Yes, it's just you just got to know. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like after the age of forty, it's just like suck it up and get on because that's what people because they think oh it's uncomfortable. I don't want to do that. It's like, but like women like from a younger age like when they started younger, they've got to get like, and apparently it's not exactly easy. Like when, when it comes to mammogram, like apparently it hurts mm. with the, the mammogram. It's kind of like that. And then, um, and then like, I remember, cause I got scared off the actual testicular, like screening, if there was something wrong, because it's like, cause people think, oh yeah, it's like a mammogram, like it's a nut mammogram, but it's like, it's kind of, it's not like that. Cause people are just telling bullshit stories. Like they got mm. spread around a lot. And 
So it's like not because people think, oh yeah, but it's going to be like the mammogram, like, like it's like a freaking ironing press when they they showed footage of, of of what happened, and I'm thinking, oh god, that's like a horrible thing. Like you don't want that to happen to the to the male parts, but it's yeah. like no, it's it's not like that at all. And and then what do they say? It's like after the age of forty, that's when you have to get all those things done. And women have to do this; they get their cervical cancer screening, and generally they generally they do a better job of you know, maintaining the checkups, yeah. you know, that's just the reality of things. And so, yeah, that's the problem with like uh, most guys and not, not hashtag, not all, but most just kind of like, ah, they, they, because of a masculine nature or masculine perception, a machismo kind of this. Oh no, I'll be fine. I can, I can shake it off and stuff like that. I'll be fine. Just a couple of days and be loved and stuff like that. <laughs> Unfortunately, or they're just, flat out lazy or make excuses and stuff like that uh, but yes no there's like a lot of guys probably would have like gotten like the discure cancer like uh caught early as uh, the like sam uh, lance armstrong i read his uh, biography this is before the old yeah. like doping ass accusations come up but he just he really just put off getting going see a doctor for the lump in his tes in testes and stuff like that and was it was till the point where it was growing and one was bigger yeah. than the oh, other that he finally yeah, no, the minute, the minute but because the cheese mode, because oh no, I'll be fine. Oh, I can still, I can still raise. I'll be fine and stuff like that. Well, it get was a, kind of get a check out. Fucking hell! I mean, um, it went to his brain. That cancer went to his oh. brain as well. But it was on the surface, so the brain surgeon was able to like just remove it quite easily. But yeah, he it oh. got so bad for him that it went to his brain. So yeah, guys, come on, don't yeah. don't be an idiot. Don't be yeah. a stupid macho guy. And then, um, sometimes. Brain. I wonder what happens, like, because if we talk about the trans men, like, once, because they're sort of full of testosterone. So, you know, I wonder what, like, because we've got to, maybe they need the reminder as well. It's like, okay, like cervical cancer, like all of those, like whatever, like, wh like whatever stage of transition it is, it's like, okay, you know, look at that as well, because maybe, maybe it's their testosterone that puts the blinders on or something like that. But I don't, I don't know. That's like um how good it is, but it might be. It might be. It, but that's it, 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 in the debate of nurture or nature. I'm kind of always of both. It's always nurture so and I. nature. Exactly. Yeah. It's it, we can debate to what degree in certain aspects and something like that. And I can adopt a more nature or mindset. And maybe recently I probably adopted more nurture mindset because it's, it's really hard to tell, honestly. But it's like it's always yeah. both. Yeah. Also, I, I, no I, I that. some kind of mix. Um. So that's why I sort of, I don't really, because nobody, when it comes to, you know, biological sex, gender or whatever, like this, when they say what's socially constructed, what's not, um, mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, it's, it's really, that's, that's, that, 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 that's why everyone's arguing about that. And, and I don't really bother, I can't be bothered, like, because I don't, I don't really look at it from that perspective, because as I said before, I'm looking at it more from the perspective of like alchemy and cosmology and astrology and all that, that, that kind of determine some I, of the characteristics. I, I think, I, I have changed my opinions on that. Is I think it's kind of more nurture, honestly. I or I'm fascinated by the approach of seeing it from a more sociological sense and from seeing yeah. things more as a social construct. And stuff yeah, like so I'm not. I've, I've kind of swerved from biology and sociology because it's like um, I'm doing like the 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 like the other thing, like just just a third option in case people like get sick of that like debate or whatever. It, it is okay. interesting when you when you present in those particular terms, like. You've actually, I've actually changed people's minds a little bit, or gotten them to rethink about that. And same with asexuality. Like I've sort of presented it in a way that that people kind of might have a second think about it. And um, what else? The same well, with the but, idea. But, of but also, but also, we, we should not try to frame things like many things as a binary. It's nurture or nature, or it's like nurture and nature. That's the two things. But they, no, I think that can be a spectrum in itself. Yes, of, of course it is. Yeah, and we're not really sure where on the spectrum it is because it's, it's very hard to isolate all the variables out like that. Yeah. But it's it's sort of like that. And then um, I guess because I'm not sort of the, I don't really use the word like rape culture itself. Like I tend to prefer mm -hmm. like maybe I'll say like subculture here, subculture there, subculture there. Yeah. It's or like, like in the, prison, the only it's reason is because rape, like so, yeah, there's like a rape subculture in prison of don't drop the soap. And that is often goes unreported, which is a problem. And that's a that's a man's issue. That's men's yeah. issues. Yeah. So that's why I'm kind of like, you know, because if I'm talking about that in that men's issues, that's okay to use the word like if I'm looking at a subculture because I'm looking at a specific attitude. But then, I think um with women like the there's there's also a really awful thing to um the prison culture there is there's also some really horrible things like there's kind of a hierarchy, and it's like the yeah. 
dog in the prison and like some of the punishments that they give to the women who don't follow the orders from the the kind of like the top dog like not the not the um how do i explain the top dog of the prison that's like kind of the she's a prisoner but she's also in charge of the other women so the unofficial like gang leader or whatever right. and it's like what they can do and their minions and what they can do to like women who don't um who fall out of line or if they if they lag or something like that then that's um like so the the punishments could be really really brutal like and and that's like a whole nother um can of worms to look at mm -hmm. all right so i think we should probably um so we've been like um going for about an hour and a half now so um yeah this, is, this has been a fun conversation uh, but... fun. Um, we've gone all over the place haven't we um yeah we talked about um funeral etiquette so um so don't yes okay so the end of the day moral of the story is um don't use those um filters at over your dead grandmother um or the or the face swap like don't do that either um i i can we can end it by i sharing to the world um um how my style of making eggnog so i got a glass here we start with whiskey mm. you pour the whiskey and then you drink the whiskey <laughs> ah, that's my eggnog i now I gotta get credit. That was a joke from uh, Stephen last uh, the late show for with Stephen Colbert. Oh, okay. Good stuff. Okay, well, so, um, yes, you can have your eggnog and turkey at the same time. That's the turkey. This is not this. This is not a sponsored promotion. Yep. So you so you have a metaphysical kind of mental escape from the cunty relatives. If you have them, <laughs> I just have my younger brother who we have phys definitely philosophical and political differences. We just don't talk about those things most of the yeah, time. Yeah. And I can, I live with him so I can tolerate him as we watch anime and eat food. Yeah. Okay. So, um, thank you very much for watching. Um, so I'm not sure what my next video is going to be. So, um, I think I'm going to be talking about religion. I'll be talking because I haven't really explained to the audience what my religious beliefs are. And this is going to, it's going to release some catamux of pigeons, but it's like, whatever. I mean, we've all got different strokes for different folks. All right. Um, so thank you for I, watching. I do have a, I'm going to make a video later tonight. And I'm um, because, uh, the Vlog brothers have just read their Nerdfighteria census. So I'm going to record myself taking that census and that will be a good Fuck. video to, to put on my channel. So it's like, Hey, you want to know a little bit about me? Uh, I took the new Vitara census and these are my answers. Yeah. Cool. So, um, so you've had a previous, this is really, um, cause obviously as you can tell, um, because you've um so random geek hasn't really made that much um like content yet he's got a very small channel but hopefully like we're trying to talk him into you know making videos so if you enjoy like of course you've got to love i mean how can you not like him it's um he's always got a great hat on it's like you know if you had it if you've enjoyed our like conversation then you know think of subscribing so i'll put the link in the description below once i go back to editing um so i'll post it on twitter so look for um so your name is the random some random geek Yes, some random geek. My real name's Jonathan oh, Scott. I don't mind not being out there. Yep. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so this is Troy. Um, so this is the Lonely Wolf signing off. So I will see you in my next video. Okay, thank you for watching, everybody. I'll see you next time.